Now, there's an entire section in the book on balance and recovery, and I think it's very easy in the social media world to see top performers with their crazy schedules and everything they're doing and all the hours they're working on it, and to think they're superhuman, when in actuality, we all need sleep, we all need moments to recover, and sometimes there's going to be other parts of our life or other identities that are just going to have to be deprioritized for us to perform at the level we need to in this specific situation. So how do you both approach balance and recovery in your performance identities? And are there any things that we might be doing wrong when it comes to balance and recovery for our audience members who, I know we had an episode recently around burnout that was really popular. I think a lot of our audience are feeling burnout for this reason. I really like the metaphor of a beach house. Like if we're all a beach house, or I invite your your listeners to say, you know, think about the same thing and pretend, you know, you are all of a sudden objectified as a beach house. Those homes that are on one or two pillars are going to be less stable than those homes on five or six. When the waves of adversity to stick with the metaphor come, obviously it's going to wipe out a lot. When I as a performance psychologist, both now within a career in the military and a career in professional sport, and I'm not going to use names here, but I think we could each name five or six people in most disciplines that have become what they do, literally. They are a really good insert the blank. And they've, they've fed and watered that for an entire career, an entire life almost. And then when it's time to transition based on ages and stages, whether we call that retirement, whether we call that whatever, what we see is, uh, again, I'm not going to say names here, but we see a lot of these lives fall apart because, they, again, they've, they're so enmeshed on what they do. So I, I, I invite the audience members to think about six different pillars. Work, relationships, which are uh, both friendships, romantic, as well as family. The third pillar is health. Fourth pillar is hobbies. Fifth pillar is spirituality can be religion, but doesn't have to be. I mean, you can be spiritual and just be in awe of this universe and this planet. And then lastly, legacy. And I would invite you know the audience members to think about how they're spending time and emotional and physical and financial resources within each of those areas. The last thing I'll say is I'm a research geek. I'm going to geek out here a little bit. It used to be thought that the most balanced performers weren't the best at what they do. Not only false, patently false. When you look at the meta-analyses and the, the, you consolidate a bunch of different studies, those performers who are more balanced are actually more likely to innovate. They're healthier. They live longer. And oh, wow, how ironic. They tend to be a lot more productive as well. So whatever they do for a living will actually become magnified if they feed and water multiple pillars on their proverbial beach house, as it were. Mm. 